So, Mr. Miller, today is a big day, big O day from Opel Day. Yeah. Um, I will ask you a question which is going to your engineering background. Uh, it's interesting to see that this, there are two philosophies. One, to design uh, electric cars as electric platforms from the very beginning, and the new one, in a way, this modular platform. From your perspective, you will tell me this is the best, but we want to hear the technical arguments why this approach of a modular platform between an IC engine and an electric engine are better than just go to a pure EV from the beginning. Yeah. First of all, it gives you, of course, a flexibility in, let's say, that enables us to go on one production line with this platform, so we can flexibly produce ICE versions and electric versions. So that gives us, of course, a, a great responsiveness uh, in case the market demand is going up or down for one or the other version. So it's the technical enabler to run the car through one production line. That's one big thing that we were striving for. But on the other hand, uh, the advantage of designing from the beginning an electric car, which is giving you a lot of freedom, especially in the interior space, mm -hmm now it's lost well if you do it smartly it's not lost so as you can see on the CMP platform we took a lot of let's say dedication to pa to package the battery so that it's completely transparent uh, to the customer of an Opel Corsa so you cannot differentiate between the ICE version or the battery version be it for the passenger compartment but even the luggage compartment when you open the rear door is the same and this is all down we are not using a skateboard type of battery which would bring your knees up uh, and your legs but we, we have empty space for the feet, um, so we have really, let's say, a layout for the batteries to, to not have any disadvantages. So, and of course you have the low center of gravity, like you have it usually for battery electric vehicles, so all the, the opportunities are there. What did you do with the front part where is no more engine? Ah, we, how, you, uh, how we how use it, so how, to you say, feel how it. we fill it up. <laughs> of course, we fill it up, uh, let's say, with the electric machine, uh, with, the, with the transmission of it, but also, probably remarkable, uh, we have a heat pump system, so mm -hmm. for the heating of the cabin, um, as maybe some people know from their household at home, so that's a technology where with a, let's say, small amount of electricity, you can still gain a lot of heat, heating uh, power. Mm -hmm. So that's especially for the cold environment, cold season, we are not wasting a lot of direct battery energy for heating. So that's a device that we put on, on in the front compartment um, to, to, to say one thing, yeah. Uh, as a compliment, uh, when I saw the battery, uh, I was impressed. It looks very compact, very mm -hmm. small. Can you reveal how many kilos is the battery? The battery is around 350 kilos still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many kilos is the entire Corsa Electric? About 1,500. Okay, so it's in the in the range of a normal uh, compact uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. electric car. What, is, what was important that also for the normal version we have gained a lot of mass from the pre previous generation of Corsa. We mm -hmm. took more than 100 kilos out for the normal uh, normal version, yeah. and this of course helps for the battery electric car as well because you have a lower baseline. Who is the supplier of the electric uh, battery? CATL. That's one of the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. The Chinese of uh, CATL are really very good. Yeah, yeah. Working with them, uh, to my, I just came from China, um, you have a great future because they are uh, rolling new and new uh, type of uh, lithium-ion batteries, which are better and better, so yeah. it looks like uh, you, you picked the uh, right uh, partnership. Yeah, exactly. We are very happy with it, and we would say today we have a state-of-the-art technology, yeah, which is even a little bit better than what we previously had in the Ampera E. Yeah. Which was, the, by the way, very yeah. good. Yeah, very, very good one very already. Good. Yeah. What, what do you uh, expect for Corsa in terms of uh, real-life uh, performance? It will keep the promise of the free, free zero. Uh, we, we do EcoBest Challenge and we check that, uh, so we will know for sure. But according to your tests, it's a realistic figure beyond the WLTP. Yeah. We are now be looking beyond because the WLTP is a respectful kind of measurement based on a certain uh, cycle. We know that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is always tricky. So based on your tests, what you can say about the real range of uh, Corsa Electric? So without a lot of sacrifices, you should get between 270 and 300. Yeah? 
which is uh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about the hybrid for uh, the car, which is actually the structure is behind you. Do do you think there is still a future for the plug-ins hybrids, and why? Yeah. So we see it as a very important uh, element of our CO2 strategy of the future. Mm -hmm. um, Opel has a history with, let's say, vehicles that can run purely electric or also on a combustion engine, when you remember the, the first generation Ampera. Yeah. And this uh, concept of having enough electric range, for example, for the use case to go in city centers, but then still have the full autonomy at any time with a combustion engine, this, this definitely has an appeal. And this is why we think it's a smart solution. Yeah, still as the entry into the pure electrified world is still for many, many customers, uh, let's say, characterized by, by the, the question on range, even though I think it's not, it's not the reality when you have a battery electric vehicle, you will figure out that, that it's good for 99% of the use cases. But nevertheless, uh, PHEV, when you really regularly charge it, that's of course an obligation that you should take seriously, that you really run it also electric whenever you can. Um, is a great combination and we believe it will have a great customer acceptance. Well, here is the, the, the trick because as we know from studies, and that's, that's a fact, most of the people do not charge overnight the PHEV cars mm -hmm. and they run out of fuel. Did you ever thought as an engineer how to persuade people to obey to the rules that because it's a PHEV you have to mm -hmm. charge every night to find the solution to make them do this well of course it depends we would not like to be too prescriptive to the customer that we really force him I mean the customer should be free to do what he or she wants but um, definitely for example an indication that I run pure electric vis-a-vis -vis on the combustion mode that could be something to to just raise the you know the motivation of people to really indicate to the outside that you run purely electric so we are thinking about concepts like this yeah and then of course in the future as the car becomes the uh, part of the internet of things when we really ta talk about city restrictions there should be opportunities by connectivity to also then really enforce that the car should be driven on electric mode for example when you run in the city center and then of course we get this intrinsic motivation to the customer to to recharge it yeah but let me be even more simple uh, customer oriented but a responsible customer i did this proposal to other manufacturers mm -hmm. why not to put something in your software to say hey dear customer you bought a plug-in hybrid which is supposed to be charged every night be aware in the last two months you did nothing. Mm. You are running out of fuel. Be aware that in another one month you don't do it, you will run without nothing because the car will be stopped. Mm. You may say, hey, but that's, uh, it's a push against the customer. I disagree because when I buy such a car, I know exactly what I'm buying. Mm. I don't buy a normal car. I'm buying a plug-in hybrid. So it should be somewhere in the rules on both sides customer and manufacturer, the obligation that we sell a plug-in, I'm buying a plug-in hybrid. I'm not buying an electric or I'm not buying an IC. I'm buying a plug-in hybrid which has certain rules. Mm. What do you think about this? Because technically it's very easy. Yeah, for sure, it's doable. And I think ethically we should find these ways. And again, I'm a little bit concerned to be overly prescriptive, to not permit, let's say, to start the car. Uh, it's very intrusive, of course, but I agree with you. We should find these ways and I think as as the electricity uh, propulsion is now finding its way also to a more mass market, I, I think these debates will happen more regularly and maybe we come to these concepts. As you say correctly, we could, of course, technically could be done easily. Yeah. How do you see this uh, electrification process in Opel, but also generally? Uh, we are here. That's the first, uh, let's say, uh, Corsa Electric. More to come as mm -hmm. we, we... How you see this progress? in the next 10 years, next 20 years as an engineer. Because it is obvious for all of us that that will be not only electric in 20 years from now yeah, on. Yeah. It will be a mix. How do you see this future as an engineer? How quick? And obviously it depends on the region. So I, I leave you all the opportunities okay. to tell the, your vision. 
Let's maybe focus on Europe, because yep. as you say, globally, there will be always markets with purely combustion. There will also be segments uh, with yep. combustion. Um, definitely electric propulsion will prevail, let's say uh, until 2040 at least, that would be my, my guesstimation. We will see electrically, purely electrically driven cars in the majority. Um, I believe, however, that we need to sh take a sharp look on, for example, the fuel cell, so that we are not really bound to big battery vehicles, yeah, mm -hmm. but smaller batteries, types of fuel that can anyway run a, a purely electric vehicle. Um, so hydrogen is definitely something that we have in the cards. And more in the short run, we are also s looking into uh, alternative fuel, synthetic fuels, because that definitely would be something that could immediately, of course, address all the vehicles that are in the car park. So that is still definitely a big untapped uh, opportunity to, to bring down the CO2 yeah, uh, by, let's say, by means keeping even the current car that you have. Yeah. What do you think about these, um, let's say, um, propositions like, you mentioned fuel cell, but uh, the solid state batteries, mm. the inductive wireless yeah, charging yeah, yeah. for the future, what, what, all of this, even uh, different technologies than lithium ion, what do you think about the future? How will be the future of this? It will be one, it will be more, it will be in 20, 40, five different technologies. What do you think as an engineer? I think that for the next, let's say, maybe up to the mid decade, 2025, 20, 28, we will definitely have lithium ion as the, the pro, let's say, as the primary. And, not and the then solid state, solid state huh? may take over at this point in time. Are you sure about that? Because well, I'm, I'm wondering sure. in the last two years, everybody's <laughs> promising, nobody's showing nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is why my outlook is a little bit conservative too when we say end of, let's say, 28 maybe. Yeah? So let's not be too ambitious. Lithium ion will be now uh, what we have. So that's definitely uh, the mainstream. And the as wireless? far as wireless charging, that's definitely a convenience factor that you could also p potentially have at home. So I, I think that's, that's something that is interesting. Yeah? And the fuel cell, do you think hydrogen will become a solution or difficult to say? Because some people say, it's complicated. Yeah. It is, let's say, technically it's no longer complicated. So also at Opel specifically, we have a big history with fuel cells, exactly, so, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it can be done. It's now all about, uh, let's say, finding significant use cases. And this, these may rather be found maybe in the commercial, light commercial vehicle space mm -hmm. more than in the private uh, passenger car Correct. sector. And there, however, we also know from potential customers that there is an interest in hydrogen. And um, so when we, and we are striving to do something in this domain and we do not no longer want to have pilot fleets. We would like to really now get it to a, to a significant scale. And yes, there is interest, and I see a future for hydrogen fuel cell. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Welcome. much.